Bless the name of the Lord, everybody. God has been just that good to us. And we are so grateful. God has been just that real to us. And we are so grateful. It's good to see you, family. It's good to see Miss Adelia. Greetings with the joy of Jesus. It's good to see uh, Shavia. I'm not sure if uh, Miss Adelia, you can hear Apostle. There we go. That's more like it. Danielle, it's good to see you. It's good to see everybody. Hallelujah. Put a big smile on your face because you are in the presence of the Lord. I'm excited to come into your world once again with the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart that this revelation will catapult you from one level of authority to another level of authority. From one level of dominion to another level of dominion. Come on, somebody, you better receive that. From one victory to another victory. That is so. I believe that. So get your Bible. I'm not going to be long. I promise you. Get your Bible. Get your notebook. Get your notepad. And lift up that power up high. And say it like you mean it. If you don't have your Bible, you know what to do. Go ahead and lift up your hand. Say it like you mean it. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe. It contains the word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. Today I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life and my life shall never, shall never ever, ever be the same again. Be the same again. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Once again, it's so good to see all of you here on Zoom. If you are on Zoom, you better be excited because in few minutes we are going to have a lot of people in here and we might not be able to see you so now since we can see you put a big smile on your face and uh you know put the devil where he belongs oh, yeah. some of you the enemy is still shocked how come after all he has tried to to do and after all he has tried after all that he has tried to silence you and to shut you down you are still standing. He's still confused. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am excited. So let me start here. Last week, we had a service called God of Signs, Miracles, and Wonders. Oh, yes. And we touched on the prophetic. If you remember, our main scripture was Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals it to his servant, the prophet. And I did explain that the duty of a prophet in our lives is to reveal the will of the Father. But we, are, we have a lot of Christians who are treating prophets as creators. Prophets are not creators, but prophets are revealers. I gave another example, so... This is a preview because I'm about to take you deeper. Oh, yes. So I want you to understand where we are coming from. I gave an example and I said, if I was to take $100, put it in this room, switch off the lights, and tell you that there is $100, look for it. You look and look and look, and after a few hours, you come back and say, Apostle, stop playing with me. There is no money in there. All I have to do is to go to the switch, put back the lights, and lo and behold, you will see the $100. Yeah. 
It will be stupidity for you to think the light created the hundred dollars. Because the light did not create the hundred dollars. But the light revealed the hundred dollars. And I did explain that we have been blessed with all kinds of blessings in Christ Jesus. And God put these blessings in a place called spiritual realms or high places according to the book of Ephesians. So a prophet with the prophetic ability is able to tap in and see that which belongs to you but not yet born to time and reveal the will of God concerning your life. You might be sick and when he looks at you and by God's prophetic calendar, you are not supposed to be sick. So his duty is to reveal the will of God. Oh, yeah. And we went deeper as to what is the office and what is the functionality of a prophet? What does it mean to be in the prophetic office? I don't know if you guys are ready for today because I feel oh, yes. the people that are on Zoom today uh I'm sure they are just visiting. I'm not sure if these are the people I'm used to. But I, I believe you guys are getting me on YouTube because we are live on YouTube. And I believe you guys are getting it. Yeah. So we ended up connecting that message to the prophet Elijah who released the mantle to Elisha where we spoke about the born prophets, the prophets who are called into the prophetic, who were not born prophets, right? And we went deeper to say a prophet can speak the mind of God without God speaking. Amen. And that is because they have the ability to tap in the mind of God and know the will of God concerning a people and reveal the will of God without God at that moment saying anything. We saw that in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 and 2 Kings chapter 7. But today, I want us to go deeper. Oh, yeah. And you better be ready for this one. Yeah. I always wanted to teach it. But the Holy Spirit could not permit me. And that is because I believe that the people I was still teaching, they needed context first. So the Holy Spirit has capacitated you. Hence, you'll be hearing this. Amen. What are we talking about today? Write it down. We are talking about signs you are a prophetic dreamer, or signs you are a dreamer of dreams. Amen. Signs you are a dreamer of dreams. One thing the enemy does not want believer to know is what God has given them. Remember, things like your prophetic abilities, your spiritual gifts, and power they are tools so that you can be able to fulfill your assignment using those tools. It's very, very difficult to fulfill destiny without knowing what tool God has given you. Does that make sense? <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Because if you notice, according to the scripture, calling does not go alone. It goes hand in glove with a gift. So he calls you because he has gifted you. It is that gift then that will make the calling possible. You can be called, but if you do not know what gift you possess or carry, it will be difficult for you to fulfill that which you are called for. You know, there are a lot of people who come and say, I'm chosen, I'm called. That's not enough. What are you called for? And what would then point you to what you are called for is your gift, what we call prophetic tools. Amen. Lift up your right hand and say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. Now we flow in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. We flow in what? In the Holy Ghost. Of course, this will be a little bit it will sound controversial, but it's not. And that is because most believers will be hearing it for the very first time, right? 98% uh, of you will be hearing it for the first time. According to the Bible, we have so many gifted people. 
But what I've picked up in my walk with God is that a lot of people talk about prophets, talk about seers. And I've not had people talk about dreamers of dreams except myself. And believe you me, it's in your Bible. Let's go there and let's go deeper. And I'm not saying other people are not teaching it. I'm just telling you my experience. I've not sat down and had somebody teach. Right? And I'm saying that with humility. And I wonder sometimes, why are people not teaching this? And I then remember immediately that one can go as far as they know. You cannot teach what you don't know. Because you only travel to the direction of what you know. The book of Deuteronomy, let's start there. I wanted to pick it up in Acts, but let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Moses' last book. And I just want verse 1 only. And if you want to read it, you read it when you have time all of it. But verse 1 can take us where we want to go. And where we have to go. Is everybody here though? Amen. Say, I'm here with you, Apostle. YouTube, you better be here. Now, watch this. It says, verse 1 of chapter 13, if there arise among you a prophet, meaning the Bible acknowledges, as a matter of fact, God is speaking here, right? Uh, of course, he's speaking through Moses. If, if there arise among you a prophet, meaning the Bible acknowledges that there is such a thing called a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. And of course, where when you continue, it says, and that sign comes to pass, but that prophet or a dreamer of dreams leads you to other gods. Don't follow those people, right? But when you read verses 1, it tells you that there is such a thing called a prophet, and there is such a thing called a dreamer of dreams. I love it because the Bible, the way it's, say, it's saying it there, is actually putting a thin line between a prophet and a dreamer of dreams. Of course, we are used to, uh, I don't know if we, we can go there, but First, first Chronicles chapter 29, verse 29, I'll quote it, it's okay. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 29, it tells us about seers and it tells us about prophets. But I want you to understand that uh, on top of seers and on top of prophets, there are people who are called dreamers of dreams. Uh, I don't know if you want us to continue right now or we should postpone this service for another day. We, we are here. Monique is saying, let's go, doctor. Okay, let's flow then. Now, it is of great importance for you to understand that there is a man or a woman that every time God looks at them, he sees a prophet. There is a man and a woman that every time when God looks at them, sees a seer. But pay attention now. There is uh, a man and a woman that every time Jehovah God looks at them, he sees uh, a dreamer of dreams. Hence today we are talking about signs that you are a dreamer of dreams. Because uh, the more you know, the more you function. And the less you know, the less you function. And of course, Apostle here has to go a little bit deeper. Why dreamer of dreams? Because God speaks in dreams. Uh, remember, the, the, the prophet's duty is to hear God on behalf of the people. So you will speak the will of God, reveal the will of God to the people. 
So he is uh, the mouthpiece of God, God's representative. That's why the Bible then said uh, in the book of Job chapter uh, 33, and you read verses 14 and verses 15, it says, God speaks to every man once, yet twice, but men perceive it not. Verse 15 says, in a dream, God speaks. When deep sleep falleth upon men, God speaks. In the slumberings of the bed, God speaks. In the visions of the night, God speaks. He opens the ears of men and seals their instructions. So you and I cannot argue anymore whether God speaks in dreams or not. Dreams are one of the major ways that God communicated uh, with and to his people throughout the entire Bible. We have our heroes in the Bible that if you were to read and understand how they entered into a covenant with God, you'll be shocked because you realize that most of them, they entered into a covenant with God in a dream. Dreams are so powerful before God uh, that God sealed a covenant with Father Abraham uh, in a dream in Genesis chapter 15. Dreams are so powerful that Solomon's wisdom was not given to him when he was awake or while he was awake, but his wisdom uh, and his riches, uh, he received them in a dream and he woke up, he was a different man. God takes dreams so, so very serious. So let's get straight into it because I will flow as I continue. So I just wanted to build my case and lay a proper foundation because uh, I don't want one to say, but why dreams? Uh, because God speaks through dreams. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, the number one sign, I want us to get straight into it. I, I told you I'm not going to be long. So the number one sign, write this down now. The number one sign that you are a dreamer of dreams is that you will have prophetic dreams. Uh, not everybody that dreams, uh, dreams uh, prophetic dreams. <laughs> That's why there are uh, three types of dreams, and I don't want to talk about that because I'm here to talk about something else. Uh, not everybody can tap in and have or withdraw what we call prophetic dreams. Please write that down and never forget it in Christ Jesus. Write it down. Now, I want you to understand that prophetic dreams um, are vivid. Prophetic dreams are visual, powerful, convincing, and very personal. Those that are writing, I'm doing that for you guys. So prophetic dreams are vivid, visual, powerful, convincing, and very much personal. If you are not in the dream, it is no longer called a prophetic dream. It's called a spiritual dream. I'll give another example so you guys understand. Uh, a man called Pharaoh, he saw seven cows, uh, thin ones, and he saw seven cows, fat ones. And in his dream, uh, he saw the thin one eating the fat ones. And when Joseph came to interpret, uh, he said, Oh, king, this is seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. That was a spiritual dream. The dream was not just so much about him, but was so much about the nation and the people. So if you are not part of it, in a sense of where you are not, you are dreaming, but you are not in the dream. You, don't, you can't see yourself in the dream. You can't locate yourself in the dream, but you are picking up things in that dream. It's called a spiritual dream. But a prophetic dream is a dream that you are part of. Come on, somebody. Say, talk to me, Apostle. So prophetic dreams, are, uh, they are not random or meaningless coincidences. Prophetic dreams often contains uh, uh, images, even visions, objects, symbols, messages, or even specific people. And in order for you to get uh, the message of the dream, 
you are to be able to interpret the symbol. Mm. I'm talking about prophetic dreams right here. Did you guys get that? Let me put it in a way that everybody will understand. The message in the prophetic dream, right? Especially when you are seeing symbols, right? Is in the interpretation of the symbol. I'll give another example so you guys understand. A young boy in Genesis 35. Am I correct? Genesis 35. No, Genesis 37. Was it Genesis 37? The story of Joseph dreaming? Yeah, Genesis, 20, Genesis uh, 37 should be from verse 5. And um, just confirm that because I have thousands of people watching me. Quickly, people. Just Genesis 35, 37 verse 5. Check that for me quickly. Now, in Genesis, thank you, in Genesis chapter 37, and you read from verses 5, you realize that young boy called Joseph is having what we call a prophetic dream. Right? And notice, if you may, he says we're in the field and carrying some, uh, you know, bundles, and all of a sudden mine stood tall and yours started bowing on, uh, towards mine or bowed on mine. The Bible says, and the brothers hated him because they thought to themselves, do you think we'll ever bow to you? Do you see that now? That is a prophetic dream. It has a meaning. And that is a prophetic meaning. I don't know if they're getting it. But the interpretation is in interpreting the symbol and the action that is happening in that. He comes again, he says, wait a minute. I saw the sun and I saw the moon and I saw 11 stars. And, uh, you know, they, 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 they bowed to me. They respected me, depending on the vision, you are, re, uh, vision that you are re reading this from. And the father and the mother said, do you think me and your father will bow to you one day and your brothers? That was a prophetic dream. Somebody say, talk to me, apostle. So, uh, prophetic dreams uh, usually will, uh, you know, um, involve the future, the present, even the past. Once one sees themselves, because one thing about dreams is that dreams, they happen in the realm of eternity. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Or rather, let me say it in a way that, you know, uh, even babies in the Lord will understand. When I say babies, I mean those who are new converts. New converts will understand. Remember, in the dream realm, dreams are two-dimensional as well. Either a dream comes to you or you go fetch it. So people who are dreamers of dreams, usually dreams come to them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Dreams will come to them. But there is a realm called the realm of eternity. Everybody understands that and knows that by now, which we know as the realm of God, right? And why eternity? Because eternity means past, present, future, all existing in the now. Hence, God looked at Moses when Moses said, when I get there, who shall I say has sent me? God knowing that uh, Moses will be with, far, with Pharaoh in the future. He did not say, when you get there, say I was, that I was, has sent you. He gave Moses what I call a grammatically wrong statement. He said, when you get there, tell them, I am that I am, has sent you. Past, present, future, all existing in the now. Tomorrow I am. Yesterday I am. Today I am. So the realm of eternity is the realm where past, present, and future exist. Now, so once you tap in that realm in a dream, you can see yourself as a grandfather, yet you are 15 years. And you come out of that dream and say, I was a grandfather, I had three grandchildren. That is not a seldom dream, that is a prophetic dream you were able to fathom a realm called the realm of eternity. I don't think you guys are ready for this teaching. Or maybe, no, no, you are ready here and you, you two people are ready. Maybe we should just cut Zoom once and for all and let's get them to, um, to YouTube because Zoom is for people who are alive, people who understand that when we pump, they dance. When the word of God is given, they receive it with joy. Okay, I think, I think, uh,
they were they were writing. Look how excited they are. You know, these are the right people. I think I made a mistake there. No, these they are very right. I think they were writing. I I I I will forgive them. Say let's go deeper, apostle. Let's go deeper, One more time say let's go deeper, apostle. Let's go deeper, apostle. You see you can dream and see yourself as a baby. You know you have children already. But in the dream you are a baby. What is happening there? Sometimes you dream your son who's three years, but in the dream your son was a father. What is that? Those are prophetic dreams. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have fathomed the realm of eternity where God is trying to give you a message concerning the future or concerning the past. And most of the times when you see yourself in the past, God is trying to show you what went wrong and how it can be fixed. You know, sometimes you hear people saying, why do I always see myself in my previous school? Why am I always in my previous school? You see, if you're going to be logical about it, if you're going to use logic to understand it, you then ask yourself and say, but why am I not seeing myself in my current office? Why am I not seeing myself in college, in university? But I'm only seeing myself in high school. And there are those who never see themselves in high school, but only see themselves in primary. And there are those who never see themselves in primary or high school, but only see themselves in college or university. Why? Because God is taking you to the past so that you yourself can know what went wrong. But because you want to use logic, you start thinking, maybe I was too attached to it. No, there is nothing like that. It's more spiritual than you think. It has crossed the line of the natural. You can be 50 years and still see yourself in your high school and never see yourself in your office. And that is because God is trying to show you that there is a place or something went wrong and this is where it went wrong. I believe YouTube is um, hearing the man of God. So that's why it is very, very important for you to pay attention to your dreams. So you know you are a dreamer of dreams when God gives you or when you have what we call prophetic dreams. Prophetic dreams are said to you, they are vivid, they are visual, they are powerful, convincing, and they are very personal. Sometimes you come out of it and thank God it was a dream <laughs> because it was so real. And when you came out of it, you were like, oh my goodness. And some people, they are, the, the, their prophetic dreams are so real that when they feel pain that side, when they wake up, they'll still feel that pain and it will fade as time goes. Uh, hallelujah. Remember, in my mentorship class, in my school of ministry, I've got so many people, you know, it's like a group of gifted, God-loving, word-driven uh, people. And some, they are so deep in the dimension or the realm of dreams that they will tell you that one time uh, they were... Uh, they, 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 they were hurt in the dream. That when they woke up, they still felt pain. I'm not saying that is limited to only dreamers because also they are prophets. I know of a prophet, a man of God, who slept and he was reading a scroll in a dream. And when he woke up, there was a scroll in his hand. I know of a man of God who sat and uh, he was in a company of celestial beings, angels, heavenly beings, and they had a meal. Can you believe it? If you want to say angels eat, come on now. What did the Bible say in the book of Genesis? Didn't Abraham even cook for angels? Come on now. So watch this now. Watch this. I know, I know some people, you know, they are still coming in their walk with God. They go like, what? what? Just read your Bible. You'll get there. Now, uh, you see, in this dream, he's eating, you know, breaking bread with angels. And when he woke up, his hands were dead. I know some of you will have been binding the devil at that time. You'll be screaming, you'll be binding the devil, his legs, his hands, his fingers, everything. 
right? But these are people who have traveled, who have journeyed in the spirit. These are people who have walked with the Lord. Imagine John in the island of Patmos saying, I was in the island of Patmos, but I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. Ha, come on now. Come on now. And he said, I heard a voice behind me, like a sound of a trumpet. And I turned and I looked. And the voice said, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Almighty. Powerful, right? John was so deep in his walk with God that he could not die. Most of you, you know that because you are a student of scriptures. He could not die. They tried to kill him so many times. They boiled him. He couldn't, he, they popped his eyes. The man could not die. They ended up calling him the divine. They nicknamed John the divine. Man was unkillable. There are men who journeyed and there are women who journeyed with the Lord. And I want you to understand that the same God they walked with is the same God today that we are walking with. But the revelation of this God that we have determines how far we can go. I told you on Sunday that scripture declares in the book of Daniel, the people who know they are God, they shall do exploits. Not the people who believe, but the people who know. Most of you have been stuck in believing, but this is a season where you are to move from believing to knowing. Because exploits are not materialized because one believes. Exploits, they happen because one knows. So your level of knowledge determines the exploits. It is not your zeal, it is not your desire, it is not your hunger that causes the exploits. You can be as zealous as you want. But if you have no knowledge and you do not know, you will not experience exploits. You will talk about a God that you can't experience and you have never experienced. Say, so talk to me, Apostle. The second sign, because of time, that shows that you are a dreamer of dreams is what we call recognition also known or most people know it as deja vu not sure if you guys are familiar with deja vu but most people are uh, you know in the prophetic deja vu it's called it's known as recognition i don't know if people are here now i want you to understand that most people don't know or understand why they are experiencing Deja vu. What is a deja vu? A deja vu is when you are experiencing an event or a moment that feels like you have seen either the moment or you have been part of the moment or the moment is just repeating. So you are familiar with what is happening at that time. You did not read it from the book. You did not see it from TV, but it is as if your spirit is trying to remember because you have seen this somewhere. I'm glad you have joined today because I'm going to explain it to you. Okay? So most people don't know uh, why they are experiencing deja vu or recognition. The truth of the matter is, child of God, you are having or rather you have you are experiencing deja vu because you have already dreamt about the event. This often happens to people who don't remember their prophetic dreams. Hence, the event feels oddly familiar. So you can remember your prophetic dream, but the event feels familiar. So, now most of you are wondering, where did I see this? Now you know, you saw it in your dream. It is registered in your spirit, but not in your mind. That's why uh, part of the prophetic uh, move of God is based on remembering. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's too deep, right? But the, the concept here is very simple. Christ has been crucified before the foundation of the world, of this world, right? So meaning whatever happened here had already taken place in the spirit. So nothing takes place in the physical without taking place in the spirit. Do you get it now? 
So when a prophet has to really tap in the prophetic, they simply has, have to remember what happened in the spirit that has not happened in the physical. <laughs> Say, talk to me, Apostle. So people will experience this and say, ah, I know this moment. I've taught people in the school, uh, in our um, school that we had now. We had this school, 2nd and the 3rd of February. Do you guys remember that? Very powerful. We had, we had a very powerful school, powerful classes. So I'm not going to go deeper as to how to control that, right? But deja vu is also a major sign. That one is a dreamer of dreams. And of course, people here who are experiencing recognition or deja vu, they might also feel or they might feel everyone is experiencing it. Trust me, out of all the people that are watching here, we have thousands of people watching right now. Okay? Right now. Out of the number, let's say we had 5,000 people watching right now. Okay, online. Only online. Not other platforms. Online, 5,000 people watching. Do you know people who are experiencing recognition will be 50? People who are experiencing deja vu. And 50 might be a lot. You'll be surprised that it's only 12 people. And if you do not know, you think it's a normal thing. Yet what is happening to you has crossed the line of the natural. You can have a gift, and your gift is to live in the state or province of prophets and seers. And what is their state and what is their province? The realm of dreams. <laughs> you don't visit, you live there. Gone are the days where we talk about the basic principles of salvation to people who have been saved for the past 50 years. You know what the Bible says in Hebrew? I believe it's Paul talking, man. Let's not argue who wrote Hebrew and who didn't write Hebrew. But I believe it's Paul talking. He said, when I returned, I thought by now you'll be talking on solid food. You'll be taking on solid food, meat, solid food, strong food. But to my surprise, you are still on milk. He then explains what milk is. He says, basic principles of salvation. I told you that your salvation is where everything begins. But it is not where everything ends. As a matter of fact, salvation simply means spiritual resurrection. You have been regenerated. You have been made right with God. Are we, are we together? Amen. Salvation will take you to heaven. But what you know will bring heaven to you. Gone are those days where believers, they just operate like they are physical beings with spiritual experience. You are a spiritual being with a physical experience. And you are more you once you tap in the spirit. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. Do you know witches and wizards and warlocks, they get their power from the fourth dimension? And most Christians can't even access the fourth dimension. Yet witches can access it. That is the easiest dimension to access. Then you have Christians who can't even access it. Like, listen, they can't. They don't even know there is such a thing called a fourth dimension. They read and see Paul who was caught up in the third heaven. And they think this happened in the days of Paul. John himself, they see John, uh, uh, gate opening in the heaven, said, come up hither. They see John entering the fourth and the seventh dimension. They say, ah, it was John. No, it's in our Bible. But because, you know, we are used to the obvious. When you hear things like this, you shake your head and say, no, 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 no. Yet, if you are going to listen and study the Bible, you realize that nothing is coming out of my mouth that is not biblical. It's just the presentation and me confronting your ignorance, some of you. Because the most difficult thing, Kiara, is to unlearn to learn. Hence, I always tell you, whoever feeds you guides your convictions. 
Do you know that you can be somebody with the destiny of a lion and die like a hyena because of the person you sit under? You can be a seer and that gift in you remains dormant, dead until Jesus comes. And you never entertain that gift. And until you entertain your gift, people don't understand that everything great about them is wrapped up in their gifts. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because whenever God gives greatness, he does not give greatness like we think he does. He attaches greatness to your spirit. And what is attached to your spirit? Your gift. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? So you can be under somebody who speaks against seeing. And you say, so it's, ah, I praise the devil fighting you. Pray, there is no such thing. You didn't hear anything. Just, just, just ignore it. Focus on the way. <laughs> and the more you focus on the way, the more you see. You come to him and say, but I saw it. Focus on the way. And the more you focus on the way, the more you are sharp. And you come back and say, but I saw it. Focus on the way. Imagine if Samuel, some of you hear me here. This is going to be prophetic. I'm going to say it once, but some of you are going to hear it seven times. Imagine Samuel. Right, A man called Samuel, a baby boy, who served the Lord before Eli, Eli in the Bible. The Bible says, and the Lord spoke to the lad, to the young boy. And the young boy went to Eli, and the third time when he went to Eli, the Bible says, and Eli perceived that it was God calling the young boy. Imagine if he had a mentor who could not recognize the voice of God. Remember, Samuel's problem was not that he could not hear God. He had God, but he could not recognize the voice of God. So hearing is not a problem. Most of you can hear God, but you can't recognize his voice. So the tips we give are to help you recognize and discern the voice of God. Because some of you already can hear God. So imagine if you had a teacher or a master that he himself was not familiar with the voice of God. Will have said to him, going to sleep, and the young boy will have missed his destiny. That's why you must be very careful who you sit under. There, these are the days where you can't forget, stop being a spiritual Vasco da Gama. Where you are here, where you are there, where you are here, where you are there, where you are here, it doesn't benefit you. You will never grow. You'll just be a Christian with sermons, but not with a revelation. Every man of God you meet. They have three things. Number one, they are God. I want to say, Apostle, now you're confusing me. I thought it was one God. Yes, it is one God. But the revelation I have determines the direction and how I will see this God. That's why Paul, oh, come on, Apostle, go there. Paul in Ephesians, in, in the book of Philippians 4.19, he says, my God shall supply. My God shall supply. <laughs> are you hearing me? And the reason why he's saying that is because of the revelation he has of his God. He didn't say our God. He said, my God shall supply your needs. Are you hearing me? And the second thing that every man of God has is grace. His grace. That's why Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 1, ye are partakers of my grace. Romans 12 says, according to the measure of grace given to every man. Amen. So every man has grace. And the third thing is his gospel. What is his gospel? His revelation. Paul says, according to my gospel. <laughs> the way some of you are looking at me, I'm laughing at some people on Zoom because some are scratching their head. Some they are not sure if they are hearing me correctly because right now it's like, what is he talking about? Listen, whoever feeds you guides your convictions. I always give an example and I will take my time here. And I will say to people, no matter how fast your car is, if you put it behind a truck and follow a truck, it will adapt to the speed of the truck. Some of you, you have an engine of a Ferrari in your spirit, but you are led by a character. So you are forced to adapt to the revelation and to the speed of a character. A journey that was supposed to take you three hours is taking you three years. Oh, they missed it. Trust me, this one, you'll hear it in, in uh, I think, before Christmas. You'll be like, ah, that was powerful. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> you say amen when you're on your own. Trust me, even me, I told you guys that a man of God was preaching and I was fighting whatever that was happening in uh, 2012. And I was disagreeing with the revelation in 2017 when I was reading my Bible and that revelation came back. I said, hallelujah. The man of God is done preaching and I'm just saying hallelujah. Can you believe it? It took me five years <laughs> to understand that. So it happens. Are you hearing me? Are you guys, are you guys still with me? Oh, yeah. So sign number three. Remember sign number two is deja vu, also known as recognition. Sign number one, you're a prophetic dreamer, right? Meaning you're having prophetic dreams. Sign number three, you can't shake away your desire for the prophetic. Yes, sir. This one, I have to explain it. Sign number three, right? You can't shake away your desire for the prophetic. And this is one of the major signs, believe it or not. This is one of the major signs that you are being called to be a dreamer of dreams. You can't shake away your desire for the prophetic. The prophetic to hear God, that's what we are talking about. You, you desire to hear God, not just for yourself, but also for people. Not just for people, but also for yourself. You know in your heart that God speaks. He sees these people's situations and he wants to do something about it. And you're constantly trying to position yourself so that God could speak and can speak through you. Are we together? Watch this now. When you read the Bible, in the book of Numbers chapter 12, Verse 6, what did God say when Aaron and Miriam were busy trying to uh, judge Moses? Because Moses had gotten himself a beautiful African woman, Ethiopian woman. And they said, who does he think he is? And the Bible says, and God had them and came down. That scripture should scare you. From the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, I've never seen God coming out of his throne the way he did at that time. I can imagine God in my vivid view coming out of his throne, leaving a note at his door, do not disturb. I, I can just imagine that. Because the Bible says, and God came down. Ah, yeah. And he said, were well, you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And then verse 6 of Numbers chapter 12 says, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will speak to him in a dream. Come on now. Come on now. And I will make myself known unto him in a vision. Do you see that now? If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will speak to him, him in a dream. God is giving you methods and ways he uses to speak to his prophets. So another sign that you are a dreamer of dreams is when you can't shake your desire for the prophetic. Why the prophetic? You can't shake away the desire to hear God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And of course, that is one of the major signs that you are a dreamer of dreams. And that is because God speaks in dreams. Job 33 verse 14 says, God speaks once, yet twice, but man perceiveth it not. When you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph's life was revealed to him, but not audibly through dreams. That even as he was in a pit, he believed what God had said to him. You see, it's, it's, it's Christians of nowadays who really uh, don't take serious the, the issue of dreams. In the old, dreams were so important, and I believe that even in the prophetic now, dreams are so important, everybody that is prophetic will pay attention to their dreams. That even heathens, even people who did not believe, unbelievers, will have dreams and know that this dream has a meaning. That's why Job 33 says God speaks to every man, not only believers. <laughs> it's just that when we are now saved and we are believers, we have direct access to his voice. And we are to hear his voice. We are to know his voice. My sheep know my voice. And they hear me. They follow me. Listen to this. So, in the old, you see a man having a dream like Pharaoh. He says, no, I need an interpreter. 
He calls magicians. He calls sorcerers. He calls all these people. No one can interpret. Until one guy said, I was in prison. There's a Hebrew boy there. Say, bring him. And he interpreted the dream. And it was like that. Do you hear what I'm saying now? Amen. God speaks in dreams. I said it and I will say it again. By the time you get to 6 to 65 years, and if you are sleeping 7 to 8 hours, the moment you get to 60 to 65 years, you will, you will have slept 20 years. All hours combined of your life sleeping, when you get to 60 to 65 years, it will be 20 years. So 20 years of your life, you will have lived it in a dream. <laughs> and 20 years is too much for God not to speak to you. Zoom, are you still here? Let me see you wave your hand. That's why we always say some of you, everything that is happening to you, either God showed it to you in a dream, how you can stop it, how you can materialize some of the things that are not happening, how you can actually avoid trouble. But because of ignorance, you still perish. If there be one thing, I pray that believers of today will have understanding on is dreams. Of course, I'm not saying that only dreams. I'm going to give you five things that I pray that if you have time, you really invest in, in revelation when it comes to this one. Right? Number one, the ministry of angels. Number two, altars. How to build a prayer altar. What are altars? Things like that. Just to have a prayer altar. Number, number, number three, dreams. Do you see that now? And of course, we can't run away from the word. The word is the foundation of everything here. The word is what? The foundation of everything. Number, number four, having a prayer life. Not just an altar, but having a prayer life. Where one, just as you plan your day, you also plan your prayer life. Just as you plan for the year, you also plan for your prayer life. Does that make sense? Where you know that a day I am committed as Daniel. Daniel will face Jerusalem, pray towards Jerusalem, open the window three times a day. That kind of a thing. Where you are intentional about it. Say, I hear you, Apostle. Come on, church, you can do better. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. And of course, the fifth one is the prophetic. The prophetic on its own, you know, not combined with the dreams, but just the prophetic being there. Are you hearing me? So, we move forward. Sign number four. You usually have recur you will usually have recurring dreams. Recurring dreams. Most what that means is most of your dreams are like a series. This is not a one time event, no. It is as if this dream is connecting to the dream you had two years ago or two months or two weeks ago or two days ago. That is a major sign that you are a dreamer of dreams. A series can literally play right in front of you through dreams. Are we together? Let me break that down so because I know that a lot of people experience this. Um, the dream can be different, but the context can be the same. Okay, okay. okay. Say, so break it down, Apostle. Because, you know, I've dealt with so many things and I've experienced what I'm talking about and I've met with people who have experienced it on a higher level than I. Now, if you have what we call recurring dreams, where you are seeing your dreams, like they are like a series, right? Sometimes the dream can be different, yet the context is the same. That's why every dreamer of dreams must focus on what? Context. And in the context, we're talking about action. 
I've taught about that, uh, but I'm not sure in the public if I've done that. I think in the school. Action. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's one thing you see a crocodile there, you woke up. Right? It's another thing you see a crocodile is chasing you, you wake up. Now there is an action. The crocodile chased you. But the other one, you just saw the crocodile. How do you then interpret the, the two of them? One, you need to focus on the action. Right? But the other, you need to focus, focus on what it symbolizes. Example, what color was the crocodile? Was the water stirred up, troubled, or was it still water where the crocodile was? You know, things like that, you then begin to pick up meaning. We call them spiritual meanings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That's why the first thing that we did in our school was to interpret the spiritual meaning of 2024. And we used the Bible. Remember? You guys were here, most of you. Because this school, we had like uh, close to 700 people who have registered. And it was full, 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 full. I saw KB, you put that other, other one for other people, and over, close to 200 people have watched it. Yeah. So, I had to explain what 2020, because as a prophetic person, I cannot go into a year and not understand what the year means. Spiritually, because there is biblical meaning of it and spiritual meaning of it. The Bible has all answers, I'm telling you now. It's in your Bible. Once say 2024 is in my Bible. Yes, the spiritual meaning of it. Those who are in the school will tell you we read the Bible, we dealt with the Bible. So, what do I mean? The dream can be different, but the context can be the same. You are seeing a dog chasing you. Some of you are very scared of dogs. Whether it's a small dog or big dog, the dog is chasing you, just screaming in your dream. You are running. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> you end up in a white house where you close the door before the dog gets to you. Then you wake up and you say, thank God, the dog did not get to me. Then three days later, you sleep, you dream. This time around, you are being chased by a dragon. You are running away from the dragon, you get to the white house, you close the door, and you say, we wake up and say, wait a minute. Three days ago, I had a dream, but it was a dog chasing me. But I was in this white house. Like I got to a safe zone or a safe house. Then you say, but nah, it's just a dream, maybe. Then you have, an, you have a dream now. You are being chased maybe by people now. Or you are running away from creatures that you can't describe. Or something is happening and you are running for your life. And all of a sudden, somebody stands in front of you and you get behind them. And those creatures, they run away. Or they stop pursuing you. You see, these are different dreams, but the context is the same. So whenever we talk about recurring dreams or dreams that are like a series, we are not talking about exactly the dream and the dream exactly and exactly and exactly. That can happen. But when we talk about recurring dreams, we are not talking just about similar things. That's why they are called series-like. Because sometimes the first dream, you see, just like a series, might introduce what the second dream will actually help you understand why you had the first dream from the first place. Just like a series. First episode, they might introduce characters, you know. Then the second dream, it takes off. But you'll start understanding the series in episode three. Remember, Pharaoh did not just have that dream one time. Joseph did not have that dream one time. He had it, but now he, they were in the field where their bundles, their sheaves, had to bow to his, to his sheaf. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The second time he's seeing stars. The context is the same, but the dreams are different. Come on now. Come on, Zoom. Am I missing you somewhere? Well, YouTube is here. YouTube is here. And here we are not interpreting dreams. So please, before you tell me you are being chased by dogs, learn to learn. It's very important. It's not dream interpretation service, brothers and sisters. It's science you are a dreamer of dreams. 
Some people will leave such a powerful teaching and focus on the dream that they themselves know, but this dream does not have a meaning. I was sitting under a tree drinking water. They want to know what that dream means. You see? And miss a powerful teaching like this. Let's go. Amanda Queen, are you here? That's it. I was in sign number four, right? Sign number five. I was in sign number four, right? Now we go to sign number five. Sign number five. Sign number five. Most of your dreams entails warning of impending danger. Does that make sense? This is where now the dreams you see, they are about warning. Warnings, warnings. Of something that is coming. Prophetic. Can be about you. You see, it, it can be financial, it can be physical, it can be emotional, it can be spiritual, it can be also be about other people. You see, most of your dreams entail, entails a uh, warning of impending danger. Remember, when God reveals something to you, he's revealing it because you are either part of the problem or part of the solution. I told you, Many times, and I will say it until you hear it in the Holy Ghost, that God is not a gossiper. God does not tell you about other people just to gossip with you. He reveals to redeem. The reason why God is showing you this sometimes is because you can stop it. You can minimize it. And sometimes you can uh, 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 even cancel it. Are you hearing me? And in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a stage or in a point where you can't cancel it, stop it, or minimize it, God wants you to prepare the people. Or prepare yourself. You know, when you know that it's going to rain, you go, home, you go out with an umbrella. People who don't know it's going to rain, they will look at you and say, ah, this one. Love's just carrying things. When it starts raining, you just open your umbrella, you walk. You are not getting wet. Everybody is wet. You are prepared. Your knowledge did not stop the rain. But it helped you to be ahead of everyone. So even when it rained, you did not feel bad. You didn't feel like what is happening. Some of you, the troubles you are in, the troubles you encountered. I pray for you that if you are in trouble, you are coming out right now in the name of Jesus. Let every trouble vomit you. That is so. Come on, now you better receive that. that is so. Especially if you know that you are dealing with some things. You can't just sit there and be cute. You better receive this. Let every trouble that has been troubling you, vomit you, leave you alone. That is so. In the name of Jesus. That is so. so you, you are seeing, example, Abimelech. Do you remember Abimelech? In Genesis 20, verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Abimelech in a dream and said, Leave the man's wife, talking about Abraham's wife, for the man is a prophet. Abimelech woke up and he went to Abraham and he said, You have deceived me. You said this is just your sister. Yet this is your wife. How did Abimelech know he was? Did somebody tell him? No, it was in a dream. Woke up, went to him and said, Take your wife. As a matter of fact, he is gold. He is silver. Go. That was a warning. But how did he pick it up? In a dream. That was a prophetic dream. Say, talk to me, apostle. Talk to me, apostle. So some of you, you are so much obsessed with accuracy. That when we talk about dreams, the only thing you want to see or you want to hear is people's dates of birth. People's addresses. Come on now. Those things are for napios, man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Write this down and never forget it. Don't be obsessed with accuracy in the prophetic. Be obsessed with intimacy with the Lord. Write it down. 
be obsessed with intimacy with the Lord. And God bless everybody that is giving. May your sacrifice, your offering, your substance reach God and may angels be witnesses of it. And right at the point of your needs, may God meet you. The more intimate you are with the Lord, the, the more clearer you will hear and see. I always tell you that accuracy without relevancy is a waste of time. And I need to say this. Most of you don't understand that your calling will not be like Moses' calling. You just need to, to be pure with what God has called you for. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. So not everyone is going to be called through a burning bush experience. Are, we, are you with me? Where you have a dramatic call of God, where trees are falling, and God says, I am here. Ah, <laughs> Look at Elisha, how he was called by God. Elijah just walked by him and said, follow me. Can you believe it? And the man said, do you allow me to go and say bye to my family? He was a farmer. And he just said, follow me. He hit him with his jacket. Pa, follow me. Let's go. The men, he was, they didn't know each other. <laughs> of course, one knew that, okay, that guy is a prophet. And that guy came and said, follow me. The man said, okay, can I just say bye? And that's how he was called. And about 34 years, 36 years later, we see him calling bears. We see him calling bears. They are eating young men. We see him healing water, healing barren land, healing naman. We see him doing the impossible, raising people from the dead. We see him giving uh, Jehoshaphat a prophetic word when he went to, went to fight against the, the Moabites. Listen, we see, even see him when he's dead, his bones raised the dead while he himself is dead. Say hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. We see Timothy, and we don't see drama around his call. Though we know that his faith was connected to his mother Eunice and the faith of his mother was connected to her mother Lois. But we don't see any drama. That Paul even said, prayed for him and said, go and do any, a work of an evangelist. We don't see drama there. So a lot of people think, I need to see wind. Not every wind that you see, God is in the wind. <laughs> I'm talking to you now. This is where you say amen. amen. I know God can be dramatic. Get me right. Please don't get me wrong. Amanda, uh, Belly, uh, Ira, uh, Jonas, uh, Paul King, and Alice, and uh, Rifilwe, uh, Kani, everybody here, Maria, Memory, God can be very dramatic. If you have time and you read your Bible, you will laugh alone. Don't read the Bible for, as a history book. Read the Bible to understand the spirit of the Bible. You'll be laughing in it. You'll be like, God, but come on here. Ah, you are being extra. You know, the Bible says when you read it in Exodus that Moses lifted up his rod, right? And the Red Sea parted. But as you read the Bible, it then now... God, God now himself reveals how he did it. How he parted the sea. And the Bible says he blew one nostril. Like, do you see this? The Bible says, God says, I blew like this with one nostril and the water parted. <laughs> I said, but God, out of everything, you had to blow your nose for the water to part. <laughs> Why did you just say water part? That's how dramatic God can be. You are missing it. You better read your Bible sometimes. 
God is so dramatic that he can raise a five pounds hammer just to strike a bee that is about to strike you. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Ah, they are missing it. <laughs> The Bible says, and as of a mighty rushing wind, and they saw what looked like fire. Ah, you, you are joking. You know, God can make a scene when he wants to. And sometimes I'm like, God, but in this case, this one, I mean, you should have just maybe, was it not possible for you to just land nicely and calmly? <laughs> And of course, that is me, you know, talking to God. The Bible says, and Elijah saw a strong wind, and God was in the wind. Ah, I said, wow. Then the second time he saw a wind, and the Bible says, he thought God was in the wind, but God was not in the wind. Do you see that now? Elijah did not just go to heaven like this, like Jesus with a cloud, ascend. No, the Bible says, and they appeared what looked like chariots of fire and a wild wind. And the wild wind went... <laughs> Sometimes when I read the Bible, I'll be like, yeah, God, only you know it. You see, like, you know, chariots of fire, the man is being taken and Elisha is there. My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And once he said that, the mantle of Elijah dropped. Ah, guys, come on now. Ah, God, ah, God. You guys don't understand what I'm trying to say. Read the Bible in the New Testament by the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says, in a season, an angel will come. One angel, stay up the water and leave. <laughs> Whoever gets in there first will be healed. And sometimes I sit down, I'm like, why didn't this angel stand there and say, you are healed and go? Instead of troubling the water, whoever jumps in there, and that is me. One time Jesus heals, heals blind Bartimaeus. And another time the Lord Jesus comes and he spits on the ground. Of course, I understand the revelation. Spits on the ground, puts some mud on the face and say, go and wash by the pool of Silo. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Yet Jesus will raise the dead like it's nothing. You, I'll spit on the ground. I'll put some mud on your face. And you have to go and wash. Like, okay. I know some of you, you don't understand because you don't read your Bibles. But I do. Listen. I read the Bible. And, it, and Ezekiel said, and, this, this, and the Lord pulled me by my collar. I said, wait a minute. God, and one time I read a translation, I said, and the Lord pulled me by my hair. I was like, wait a minute. Ezekiel, you, how did you enter the spirit realm? He said, I was pulled by my hair. I said, I <laughs> guys, please read your Bible. And the man says, and there was bitterness in my soul as the Lord pulled me. <laughs> I don't blame him. And some of you are experiencing that, but I don't want to talk about it today. The bitterness of your soul as you sleep. And some of you are binding the devil, yet the devil has nothing to do with it. <laughs> you are experiencing what we call, you are having what we call out-of-body experience. Ah, you are binding. Ah, I could not move. I could. <laughs> you people, <laughs> the more you know, the more you function. <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to talk about that. Listen to this. Um, so, the warning one is very important. So these dreams mostly will entail warnings. Say, I hear you, Apostle. Dream number six. Oh, sign number six, sorry. Sign number six. You will have what we call directional dreams. Not only are you stuck in warnings, but you will have what we call directional dreams. This is where we deal with guidance about decisions or about a decision. When you are faced with an important decision, your angel may provide wisdom or advice through a prophetic dream. Yes, I just said something right there. 
your angel may provide pro provide wisdom or advice through a prophetic dream. Everybody, look at me. Do you know that when you are sleeping like this and your angel is right there, do you know your angel can enter your dreams? At will. You are sleeping and the angel can enter your dreams and you see your grandfather fighting for you, yet it was never your grandfather fighting for you in your dream. It was your angel. I, I just wanted to sing. And if you are here by now, unless you are coming for the first time, we will understand that. And thank you for coming. We love you and God bless you. We understand that. Unless you're coming for the first time. But if you have been following and you are here, you definitely know that you have an angel. Matthew 18 verse 10, Jesus himself says that. Everybody has an angel, right? He said, do not look down on these little ones. Do not despise these little children. For they are angels, right? Present themselves before, before my father in heaven. That is where the, the, the doctrine or the teaching of God and angels come, uh, comes from, right? In the book of Acts chapter 12, they said, this is Peter's angel, man. It was not Peter, but they said, this must be his angel. Revelation chapter 1, verses 1, the angel of Jesus appeared to John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't know. Now you know. That's why I told you that 90% of all the people who are saying they've seen Jesus in a dream, 90% of them, they did not see Jesus. They saw the angel of Jesus. Looks exactly like him. That in Revelation 19, verses 10, John bowed down, verses 9, John bowed down to worship the angel because he thought it was Jesus. And the angel said, do not worship me. I'm your fellow servant. Stand up for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You can't hate the prophetic and love the Lord. That's the testimony of Jesus. That's what the Bible says, despise not prophesying. And then it tells you just after that, quench not the spirit. And a lot of people for years wanted to know, how do I quench the spirit? By despising the prophetic. Why? Because the prophetic is not a man. You can have a problem with a prophet, but the prophetic is not a prophet. It's bigger than that. It's the content. What is the prophet? Is a container. So directional dreams. This is where your angel can enter your dream. Direct you, give you wisdom. Remember in Matthew 27, uh, what's that? Uh, the story of Pilate, when he was sitting on his judgment seat, ready to judge Jesus. I believe it's verse 19, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe it's verse 19, man. Matthew 27, I believe it's verse 19. Where now, the Bible says, and the wife came and said, leave that innocent man alone. Because at night I had a dream that troubled me. You see now, she's coming to give direction to the husband, telling him that the man is innocent. How did she know he was innocent? Why didn't she say Jesus was innocent when Jesus was caught, was arrested? Why did she wait for the following day where he was supposed to judge? Because she had a dream. So that dream gave her direction. And it was through that prophetic dream that she also told her husband, leave that innocent man alone. And of course, when you study that, you'll understand that history believes that, not believes, as a matter of fact, um, let me go deeper here. As a matter of fact, when you read that, uh, remember, we have so many books that are not part of the Bible that fall under the apocrypha. And I always tell you that you can't be so much excited about the apocrypha yet you have never finished your 66 books. You are a hypocrite. Why would you be focused on that side? You have not finished the inspired, right? The apocrypha removed books, lost books. So one of them is the gospel of Nicodemus, right? I'm not saying study that. If you go for it, read it like you're reading any book. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are allowed to visit books, but you are to live in the Bible. Just as you have your own house, you can visit people, but you come back in your own house, right? So you can read it as a book. There's nothing wrong with reading it. I mean, you read books that are written by people who don't even believe in the existence of God. And you get something out of that. So what more about a book that contains a history of God? Might not be inspired, yes, 
But what's wrong with reading that? Who said he's wrong in that sense? It's now what I don't believe is you now trying to, uh, you know, take that which you read there and put it within the Bible. Anyway, so according to the Gospel of Nicodemus, you then realize that's, you know, apocrypha, like I'm saying here, okay? I'm saying. So, um, according to that, they believe that Jesus, it's written in that gospel, that Jesus, through Belzebub, caused that woman to dream. So, they believed that Jesus influenced that woman's mind. But using demonic spirits. Anyway. But anyway, yeah, so the woman had a dream in Matthew 7, 27. Did you guys confirm it? Verses 19. Yeah. So you see that she had a dream. She's giving, she was given direction. You see? And even when you feel lost or stuck, or a people feel lost or stuck, you'll have a dream that will give a solution. Whether it be in your ministry, whether it's your church, or the church you are part of, or something, God will give you directional dreams. Number seven. I think I will end here because people are not excited. I will end here. Number seven. Number seven. This one will sound familiar. You dream dreams. <laughs> Remember, number one, we, we said uh, you'll have prophetic dreams. Right? Then number two, we said you'll have recognition known as deja vu. Then number three, you can't shake away your desire for the prophetic. You can't shake away your desire to hear God. Then number four, we said uh, you'll have recurring dreams. Number five, we said most of your dreams entails um, warnings, right, of uh, impending danger. And number six, we said directional dreams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number seven, you dream dreams. I feel something here. You dream, you dream dreams. Acts 2.17 says, In the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters, number one, they shall prophesy. A lot of people treat that as if your sons and daughters shall be prophets. <laughs> your child can be prophetic, but it does not mean they're a prophet. Every parent now believes their child is a prophet. I don't blame them. I seriously don't blame them. They got it somewhere. To believe that. Your child can be prophetic. But that does not mean that they are prophet. That is a sacred thing. That is a, you know, some of you are putting your children under pressure, calling them prophet, prophet, prophet. Yet their ability to fathom the spiritual realm is not even that strong. They are just prophetic. So the Bible says, in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Not your sons and daughters shall be prophets. That's why we have young people, everyone is a prophet. At the age of 13 and 14, people used to call me prophet. I never accepted that, I told you guys. Well, I didn't say, no, 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 don't call me prophet, but I never called myself prophet. And that is because they saw a prophet in me. In a sense of I was prophetic, so they thought I was prophet. I remember I waited for years, even in our posters. Right? I was preaching and my first poster came out in the year 2008. I remember very well. I was very happy to be in the post. Hey, that poster, yo, 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 yo. Yeah, yeah. When they gave me a copy of it, 2008, and I looked at it like this, I was going to preach in a crusade, and I've been preaching for a long time, but I was never in a poster. But this time, I'm in a poster. Ah. <laughs> I looked at it like this. I could not believe it. Then that poster, they had written Brother Mzwak. Yet people were calling me all sorts of names, all sorts of names. You know, that time, there was that, it was a season of bishops. So everybody was a bishop. You know people, Christians sometimes their minds are not working properly. I'll tell you why. The Bible says, if a man desires to be a bishop, number one, he must have one wife. I had no wife, but people were calling me bishop. 
Like seriously. Anyway, you won't say anything because you are calling other people bishop. But I didn't take that, you know, as this is what the Lord is saying. Because people can be deceiving sometimes. It was now after years that Jesus, the Lord Jesus himself, appeared to me and told me, you are my apostle. You are an apostle. I remember when I woke up, I told my mom. The first person I told that I'm an apostle was my mom. Yet, already I've been preaching. She's ushering me everywhere. She has received a prophecy when I was a baby that I will be a carrier of God's message and the Lord will use me as his prophet. She had received a message like that. So even in her mind, she's thinking, ah, he's a prophet. But because I had not received the confirmation from the Lord personally, I didn't want to subscribe to that. Some of you, the reason why you can't function in your functionalities is because you have subscribed to dangerous and wrong philosophies about your functionality. You are carrying a rock that you are not capaci capacitated to carry. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm just trying to help everyone. So, it was after that time the Lord said, you are an apostle. Then I came to told my mom and said, you know what? The Lord said, I'm an apostle. And I'm very, I was very excited about it, but that was years ago. I remember having another guy who looked at me and said, you are not an apostle, you are a prophet. I said, well, that's you. No problem. Are you, you, you get what I'm saying? So, the Bible there does not talk about the making of prophets. It's talking about the rising of prophetic people. It then says, young boys, young girls, in a sense of sons and daughters. And the sons and daughters there, uh, you know, it's not what everybody actually thinks, as in like sons and daughters, but let me not talk about that. Um, they shall prophesy. It then says, your young men shall see visions. Do you see something there? So who are young men and who are sons and daughters? Because we thought our sons, our sons are actually are young men. But why will it say sons and daughters shall prophesy young men? Is it age-based? No, it looks like that, but no. But anyway. So it says your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And if you read it in its original translation, you will see things like technon and who is. A technon is a person who has grown from being a baby and is in the middle between maturity and a baby. Is that's, that is in, we call it adolescent or something. Right in that stage of maturity, right? Then who is, is maturity? That's what the Bible says. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are who is, the original translation. These are the matured ones. That's what it actually says. But anyway, follow me here. And uh, you shall dream dreams. Now, we call them telepathic dreams. Where you dream dreams. Where you can be in a dream and you dream a dream. Hey. Ah, you can sleep one night and wake up with 50 dreams. I know 50 is a little bit more, but... You will wake up and sleep with and wake you will sleep and wake up with eleven dreams. How is that possible? How are you remembering all those dreams? You are you are you are dreaming dreams. Like two minutes, you you are seeing a dream. And that dream feels like two hours. You wake up, you are just seeing dreams. Yet there is somebody that can't even see one dream. It's not like dreams they love you. There is something in you. You are you are. You, you are like you 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 are like a messenger that does not know that they are a messenger. That's why they are not paying attention to the message. That's why you should never ignore your dreams. God bless everybody that is giving. God bless everybody's offering. May God meet you at the point of your needs and desires. And whatever you are 
giving for, connecting for, may it be so unto you. Listen, the dreaming of dreams is not a child's play. People can wake up with two dreams or next three dreams, but people who are dreamers of dreams, they will dream dreams. They can sleep like this, and one time they wake up and they tell you, I had nine dreams. You'll be like, what? And they will tell you I had nine dreams. The first dream, this is what happened. Second dream, this is what happened. Once it passes to three, it's beyond. And their ability to remember it, it's special. Say, so talk to me, Apostle. In the days of our Lord and Savior Jesus, do you know that his father, well, stepfather, father, Joseph, for them to go to Egypt, he had a dream. The same Gabriel that appeared to Mary physically now was appearing in a dream to Joseph because not everyone can see an angel physically. If you are a dreamer, God will use that dream realm to speak to you. And some of you, you think the way somebody is hearing God is the way you are going to hear God. No. 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 Are you hearing me? Some of you, you are hearing God from within, through your intuition through what we call inward knowledge. Have you ever been there where um, a, pra a pastor and you'll hear other pastors fighting a pastor? I mean, why would you fight? You know, uh, where a pastor says, I feel in my spirit. And people say, he's, he's using feelings. You're so ignorant. <laughs> Are you hearing me? The feeling... It's what we call inward knowledge. So we must never really focus on, let's focus on what it means. What is he trying to accomplish, this guy? And how is he trying to accomplish it? Just because he said, I feel, he said, hey, he's feeling. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know what Job said? He said, a spirit passed by my face. And the hair of my body stood up. And I felt the presence. You, you see now, you, you, you see now. Come on now. I don't know if people, when somebody, I've had preachers, and when I was young, I used to be confused. Maybe some of you are still young in the Lord, like I was. I used to be confused. When a preacher said, I feel, I feel. Then I'm like, when will this guy know? Because that was me. Because every time he's feeling, when will he be sure? Then I realize that it's inward knowledge. Without any man telling them, they know. And that is the lower level of the prophetic. Not the lowest, lowest, because the lowest is prophetic impressions. Where one will have mental pictures. Daniel 7 says, the visions of my head. That's what we're talking about there. Mental impressions, right? They call them prophetic picture, pictures in the prophetic. Where when you are praying, I told you even in the class, where when you are praying, all of a sudden your grandmother comes to your mind. You are wondering, why is she coming to my mind? You start praying. It's because at that time you are receiving a message concerning her. So, but it's, it's happening on the lower level. Just pictures. Sometimes you can think about somebody. You don't know why you are thinking about them. You just started thinking about them out of nowhere. You didn't actually control yourself or your mind, your thoughts to think about them. And you start thinking about them out of nowhere. You have not seen these people or this guy in the... It's been five years, you have not seen this guy. You have not seen this lady in ten years. But you think about her, and guess what? That day you see her, and in your mind, like, I was thinking about you today. No, you were not. It was a prophetic impression. It was a prophetic picture that was dropped in your spirit. But because, you know, to you everything is just, you know, happening. You didn't pick it up. You can look at, literally look at your phone and know without any man telling you your phone is about to ring. And your phone rings and says, I knew it. So that's what we call inward knowledge. Of course, people will look at me like this. Those who have it will understand. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Those who have it, they can relate. 
I'm telling you, like, oh, okay, okay, okay. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> Say glory, somebody. Glory. And I pray that God will give you the spirit of patience. So that in your walk with God, you'll be patient. Amen. God bless everybody giving. So that you will grow in the things of God. You see, the thing is with us believers, right? I teach something like this for one hour or one hour, 30 minutes or two hours. And somebody will not know that this that I'm teaching took me almost 18 to 20 years to know. But I'm teaching it in two hours. So that's why we must always want to learn more, but be patient. We must not want to have all the answers. Jesus himself looked at the disciples and said, there are so many things I want to tell you, but you won't bear them now. And he says, now I call you my friends. Ah, they, they had grown to a certain level now where he could share with them some things. So all I'm trying to say is that be patient. Are you hearing me? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. No matter how much you love a preacher. No matter how much you love. Doesn't matter how, you know, you, you, you can be fond of, some, of somebody. Listen, you can love somebody. But that does not, uh, you know, take away that thing that you still need to judge their teaching in light of scriptures or in light of the scriptures. Because at the end of the day, it must be biblical, it must be spiritual, it must be fundamental. And how do you know it's biblical, spiritual, fundamental when it started with Abraham? <laughs> and the prophets carried it. And the apostle continued with it. So I hear you, apostle. <laughs> ay, 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 I'm telling you now. Look at how uh, Delphine is today. I don't know. I'm used to Delphine excited. Delphine, are you here? That's more like it. I know you to love the Lord. So when you're like this, I'm shocked. All right. You are paying attention. I see it. I want to go to number eight, but I don't think the church is ready. So instead of going to number eight, let me tell you what will happen in this season. I was teaching about the prophetic calendar of God yesterday. Right? The emphasis of the Holy Spirit in this season. I was talking about that. Right? And how to know spiritual timing. Right? Because the purpose of God usually takes more than one generation to fulfill it, right? So you need to know how do you fit in and why you at this time, right? I gave an example saying God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He started with Abraham, but we see Jacob taking it to another level because the Israel that God told Abraham about actually comes out of Jacob. Of course, God did not say Israel, but he said your descendants will be in captivity. But we don't see him being the one now to give birth to those people that end up in captivity. We don't even see Isaac, but we see Isaac giving birth to the one who's going to make that prophecy come to pass. So imagine if Isaac decided not to have children. You see what I mean? It will not have worked, right? So it's very important in a generation not to take for granted your position and who you are and why you are born in such a time. Some of you, your ignorance will cost five generations, that it will take God ten generations to raise somebody like you, to rectify your mistake. Some of you, your, your role is so big that you can't afford to mess up. That's why some of you are prophetic intercessors. You are to withstand certain errors in your generation and in your family. And you are released in such a time as God's secret weapon. I don't care who says what, but you are not a mistake. You are not a discharged bullet. You are not a coincidence. You are God's secret weapon. You are very special. Whether you have pain in your hands, you are special. Whether you have pain in your body, you are very special. And don't let that pain cause your revelation to bow to it. The revelation of who God is in your life. Are you hearing me, somebody? 
Because two things are involved. Either that pain bows to your revelation or your revelation bows to your pain. So continue to speak that you are walking in divine health. Continue to speak that increase is yours. Continue to speak that you are promoted and promotion is yours. Continue to speak that the blessings of God's word is resting on you and your household. Never allow anybody to tell you otherwise. Continue to pray that you are moving from one glory to another, from one victory to another. Continue to speak that you shall have the last laugh. Continue to speak that you are protected from the wickedness of men. Continue to speak that God will stand tall through you. Continue to speak that you have arrived in that seat, in that state with the spirit of dominion. And God is up to something through you. Continue to speak and say 2024 shall not be a failed year. No. No. Shall be your best year yet. Destiny will meet destiny and greatness will be born. Continue to speak that you refuse to die like me, a man. Remember, Psalm 82 says they die like me, a man, because they know not. Continue to speak and say, no, I refuse to die like me, a man. Yes, because some of you have a destiny of a lion. But if you are ignorant, you'll die like a hyena. You see, there are certain things I normally say that may it never be said about you that you could have been more than that. May it never be said about you that you had a destiny of an elephant, but you died like an ant, like nothing. No, may it never be said about you. This is, this, this, is, this, is, this is war. And the battleground is the mind. What you know matters. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says, the rushers shall be delivered by knowledge. <laughs> That's powerful. So in this season, let's go. In this season, Mama Charisma, are you there? God bless everybody that is giving. God bless everybody that is giving, whether you are doing it through Cash App, uh, PayPal, or what is that? What is it? YouTube. God bless everybody. Now, watch this. In this season, all dreamers of dreams will be seeing so many things. But there are three revelations that dreamers of dreams will be seeing. Number one, war. All prophetic dreamers, you begin to see war in your dreams. Wars in your dreams. And you will wonder, what is happening? Don't worry, we'll explain that later. The second thing that dreamers of dreams or prophetic dreamers will be seeing in this season, in their dreams, is the end of the world. I'm talking about rapture. If you want, you can combine it and say second coming. But we know that rapture is not second coming, and second coming is not rapture. Because there are two different things. One is parosh, another one is a puzzle. This one is snatching away, this one is the coming, second coming. So, that's number two. So, prophetic dreamers will be having dreams. It will, as if fire is raining or something, or just the end of the world. Or just rapture taking place. Something happening to this world and this universe. You'll have those revelations. That is number two. Number three, I don't know if the people are I, I think I, was, I will end here. Number two is fine. I will, I will stop in number two. Uh, I think I will... I, will, uh, I think we, we will stop in number two now. Because you guys are not excited. Remember, we are one big family. If you are coming for the first time, don't try to measure. We welcome you. We love you. Just fit in. Just be part of us. And let's flow. We love you. We might not know you, but we love you. Number three. Number three. Prophetic dreamers. You'll be seeing a lot of men of God in your dreams. Different types of men of God. But this time around, the dreams will be very clear. 
You see, most of the times, it was them maybe praying for you. But this time around, as you pay attention, men and women of God. So this is not just men, but men and women of God, servants of God. This time around, it will be as if God will be showing you something. Even attacks that are coming towards them, God will show you. Because right now, there is a standard that, it, the standard has been raised, so to say, by God to protect his servants. And prophetic dreamers will pick it up in the spirit. And God will cause you to stand in the gap. You'll be surprised. A man of God that you don't even listen and follow. You are seeing them in your dream. And some of them, you, you had people calling them fake and they are, they, are, they are coming in your dream and say, ah, what is happening? Hence, I always told you, don't move by information, move by revelation. If you are somebody who waits for somebody to tell you that somebody is fake, you'll never follow a man of God in the world, in this world. Are, are you with me? Imagine what, what in our time they were going to say about Paul. It was going to be bad, right? Paul is better, man. Have you thought about Elijah? You see, of course, we'll act as saints right now and act like, you know what, ah, we, we, we're going to believe Elijah. Trust me, if Elijah was here, even you right now, you will not even subscribe to his YouTube channel. Elijah, ah, you will have called Elijah with names, wizard, or whatever that is, the greatest witch, or whatever that is. Man was something else. Imagine they say, prophet, man of God, come down. Says, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down and consume you and your men. The Bible says, fire came from me. <laughs> Consumed the men and the captain. Watch this. Not only that. Listen to what this man says. This man comes and he says, there shall be no rain, no dew, according to my word. Christians today say, what kind of a God will close me? A rain? <laughs> Ah, they'll say it's not God. They'll be binding him. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes back and he says, now there'll be rain. Ah, hear this. Elijah was something else. I'll give you another example. Man was being fed by ravens. Do you think in our time we're going to be able to digest that? No. Let me tell you something about this fellow. This fellow, he caused a fair mind. That ended up affecting him. But God was providing for him supernaturally so, right? That God ended up telling him, go to this place. There is a widow there that I've commanded to take care of you. Elijah goes, meets this widow, and asks this widow, what do you have for me? The widow said, nothing. He said, okay, what do you have? He said, uh, I have small thing here, flour. And small thing here, I put it together. We make bread, another vision, make cake. Me and my son, we eat, we die. That was the last meal. And you know what Elijah said? Give it to me. Hey, prophet. Imagine what ABC will have said at that time. Oh, you are not getting me. Imagine what online bloggers will have said that time. Imagine you, what will you have said? You will wake up in the morning, we hear a false prophet took a woman's last meal. Hey! And not even talk about the miracle that happened after Elijah took the last meal. It's so dangerous because God said to Elijah, I've commanded her to take care of you. But the woman did not even know about it. <laughs> and listen to what she said. We eat, we die, me and my son. And guess what? Later on, the son died. But guess what? Elijah had to resurrect the son. So it was never about Elijah. It was about the woman. But if you are going to look at it with a logical uh, approach or logical about it, or you just use carnal mind, you say, Elijah, are uh, you? Uh, that's why, trust me, if Paul was here, uh, it would have been bizarre. Ah, it would have been worse. People like Peter, of course, were going to understand and all of that. They were going to have people fighting them, but not like Paul. The people of our time can't forgive. His past would have been in hindrance for people to listen to him. People would think, ah, this guy just wants to make money. Paul, <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? 
That's what I'm telling you now. So if you are somebody who moves by information in your walk with God, that's why you must have discernment of the spirit uh, of spirits. You must be able to discern spirits. The ability to discern spirits. Discernments of spirits. Discernment is important. Most Christians, they judge. See a man of God wearing a long shirt, it's not tugged in and say, ah, this one is not serious. And you see a man with a suit with a Bible under his arm and say, this one is the man of God. No, you are judging. Say, this one is sweet. I love how he talks. He's not fast. He's not slow. If you're following because of those things, you'll be surprised what will cause you not to follow. Follow because the man speaks to your spirit. The revelation of the man brings you closer to God. The way the man you know, uh, moves in the word. I'm talking about the word because nothing should actually cause you to follow a man except the word. Let the rest come, but the word must be your main reason why you follow somebody. Not the ability to see, not the ability to prophesy, the ability to heal the sick, the ability to cast demons. No, those things let them come after. Because any man who cannot prove themselves in the word, they are danger. They are danger for you to follow them. They are dangerous to be followed by God's people. Are you hearing me? Somebody saying, uh, Apostle, is it possible that you continue for two more hours? I would love to. But because of time, I want us to pray. And in this prayer, I'll be praying for you myself. I feel in my spirit there are people that God is raising here. Are you hearing me? There are people God is raising, especially seers and dreamers of dreams. God is raising you in a mighty way, in a way that will shake the foundation of your generation. It will shake even the foundation of your city. That even principalities, princes, <clears throat> who have claimed territories that don't belong to them, will know there is a woman here who God has raised. There is a man here. Strong men will know in that city. There is a woman. There is a man here that God has raised. Or we always thought she would not come to the realization of what she has. But she has come all of a sudden. Are you ready to pray? So in your prayer, I want you to say, Lord, I'm available. I'm willing. As simple as that. The kingdom of God is not based on ability, but availability. I'm available and I'm willing. And teach me to be obedient to your voice. May I be obedient to your voice. Are we together? Because once you're obedient to the voice of God, you will not take your dreams for granted. Because as a believer, you know that God will speak to you in your dreams. So in your dream, in your prayer, you say, here I am, oh God. I can give you a dangerous prayer I prayed years ago. But here you need to really be sober. God, if you want to use somebody's eyes, use mine. If you want to use somebody's ears, use mine. God, if you want to use somebody's mouth, use mine. If you want to use somebody's hands, use mine. If you want to use somebody's legs in this city, use mine. I'm available. That's a dangerous prayer. But you'll see that heaven will just begin to work through you. Lift up your voice wherever you are and begin to pray. I'll be praying for you as you pray. Lift up your voice. Everybody, speak in tongues. If you can speak in tongues, go ahead and build yourself up in the Holy Ghost. Edify yourself and then begin to pray and speak to God about what we are talking about. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every woman and every man under the influence of my voice. That in this season, oh God, they shall walk in their calling. They shall walk in their giftings. They shall walk, oh God, in their anointings. In the name of Jesus, in their graces, I push them to the realm, oh God, of possibilities. I declare no more delays. I declare no more obstacles. I declare no more hindrances. In the name of Jesus, every stumbling block right now has been brought down in the name of jesus what used to stop them shall stop them no more 
what used to hinder them shall come on lift up your voice and begin to pray like you mean it what used to stop them shall stop them no more what used to hinder them shall hinder them no more in the name of jesus it shall be easy for them to flow it shall be easy for them to enter and connect in the spirit in the name that is above every name the name of jesus i declare and i decree that scales are falling off their eyes in the name of jesus and there is restoration of god in their life there's restitution in their walk with you oh god in the name that is above every name their altar is catching fire their altar is catching fire once again i said their altar is catching fire once again and they are beginning to bud in the spirit their spirit man is budding in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i declare and i decree that anything that heavenly father used to separate them oh god used to take them away from your presence from your will i declare and i decree that it shall separate them no more it shall take them out of your will no more in any relationship that has been a distraction that they were not aware of may it be exposed in front of their eyes may it be revealed to them in the name of jesus i declare and i decree ability of oh god not just to hear and see but ability by the holy spirit to fathom mysteries to enter the realms of mysteries and download oh god mysteries retrieve mysteries extract mysteries in the name that is above every name like a sword in the hands of a skillful fighter use your people in the name of jesus lord we are forever grateful for your grace and your love the grace that you have given us to minister to your people to be a blessing to others in the name of jesus it is never by might not by power never by might, never by power but it is by your spirit in the name of jesus we pray that even in this season oh god we are awakened we are alive in the spirit in the name of jesus we are not ignorant we believe that even curses oh god that have remained for generations in our families in our communities in our cities by the reason of us being here in such a time those curses oh god shall be broken shall be rendered powerless rendered useless shall not have a cause in the name of jesus we declare and we decree by the power of the holy ghost that this is our season oh god of spiritual realities in the name of jesus makila baron takalevre hesina kadush pairan takiva rakabonda brakadija aklante vehika bahaya we have arrived with the spirit of power we have arrived with the spirit of dominion we have arrived with the gospel of our lord and savior jesus christ i feel the spirit of prayer in here in jesus mighty name we pray i feel the spirit of prayer i'm telling i feel the spirit of prayer i feel, yeah, I feel the spirit of prayer and the spirit of prayerlessness is being broken right now In the name of Jesus, I feel in the Holy Ghost that somebody here, like a horn of a unicorn, the Lord shall raise you. Like Jabez who prayed and said, Oh God of Israel, bless me and increase my territory. I see the Lord blessing you. I see the Lord increasing your territory. I see the Lord changing your name. That people who used to know you this way shall look at you and say something has taken place. So. I see you having access to who you are in the spirit. I'm talking about your identity now. So. I see you having access to your office, your authority in the spirit. So. That you shall begin to command exploits. So. Your voice will not be an echo. But when you speak, even demonic entities 
shall make way. You shall be driving like this and see a group of young men in drugs in all these things and speak and say, this is the end of it and it shall be the end of it. Oh Lord, I speak to you. Receive that prayer. Your generation will glorify God because of you. By the reason of you, your children's children will not suffer. Your children will not have to start afresh. Don't tell me. Don't say, but apostle, how? The how part is not for me to answer. God shall do it. Because once we explain the chemical composition of a miracle, it ceases from being a miracle. God is part of your story. And your past shall hurt you no more. Your past shall haunt you no more. Your past shall trouble you no more. Your past is in the past. And the blood of Jesus right now comes against your past. Comes against the guilt that has been haunting you. And angels are assigned to watch over you. Angels are assigned to watch over your children. Angels are assigned to watch over your affairs. What concerns you has been protected. Who am I talking to, right? Problems that were waiting for you this year, that were waiting ahead of you this year, they are being right now nullified, demolished, destroyed. You shall flow. I said you shall flow. There is somebody right now receive this prophetic word. I, 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 this is for you now. This is for you right now. And I speak as a servant of God. I speak as an apostle. Somebody right now. Somebody right now. God is making a way where there was no way. Help is coming. Somebody right now. There is help coming to somebody right now. Help is coming to somebody right now. Receive divine help. Receive prophetic help. God is putting your name, some of you, in people's hearts. That they will never have rest until they come and help you. Because your help comes from the Lord. Yes, men can help you. But your help comes from the Lord. So it is the Lord God who causes men to help you. I see peace in your marriage. I see peace in your relationship. I see peace in your walk with God. Financial peace. Financial freedom. You shall worship the Lord with your substance. You shall worship the Lord with your money. You shall not serve money. But money shall serve you. You shall not be after it anymore. I, I'm prophesying to somebody that right here. So. Money, money cometh to you. So. In big numbers. So. Money knows your address. So. Money serves you. So. You don't serve it. So. Money with a mission. So. Where we will take over nations through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So. Money to finance the gospel. Money to win more souls. Money to build God a house. Money to be kingdom financiers. In the name of Jesus. Some of you is healing you're trusting God for. May it be unto you. Just as you desire. Some of you, you are trusting God for, for, for relationship uh, a deliverance. You can't help but fail when it comes to this area. Let there be help. Let there be divine wisdom. May God give you ability to judge differences. Ability to know what is what. How is what. And when is what. Some of you are trusting God for debt cancellation. May heaven help you. People don't know that God always wants to help them. And God will never run away when you are actually facing problems. 
and run away. No. And he will never run out of solutions. God has billion ways to take you out of one problem. Amen. You will never exhaust the heaven's resources. No matter the state of earth. Earth's temporary state does not change heaven's eternal principles. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, talk to me, Apostle. Talk to me, Apostle. I pray for you. That, is so. that every word spoken against you, Amen. every word that was raised against you in judgment, Amen. whether online, whether in shrines, in covens, Amen. whether somebody spoke out of envy or out of jealousy, whether somebody is in your past, and they are intimidated by your success and they don't want to see you make it so that they can feel evil words shall not prosper in your life. That is so. Those evil words shall not come to pass. That is so. In the name that is above every name. That is so. The name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is so. I saw a testimony. Somebody said, Apostle, you said in 14 days we'll be testifying. I got a new job uh, that I've been praying for. But listen, everybody under the influence of my voice, you are in seven days of answers. You have just entered seven days of answers. Some of you, you will receive physical answers. Some of you, you will receive spiritual answers. You receive an answer to your calling. You receive an answer to your assignment. An answer to your career. An answer into that business. Listen, there shall be answers everywhere. That everywhere you turn shall be an answer. God shall surround you with answers this, this season, this coming week. Because you are in seven days of answers. Somebody, you better receive that by force. You better take it by force. You better, you better catalambano it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's happening. Angels are assigned, are dispatched right now as we speak. Some of you tonight as you sleep, the moment you go to sleep, there shall be an activity of angels. There shall be an activity of angels. That some of you in dreams, you will even be told, you remember the teaching of Apostle Miss. I have come because of that teaching. Now, here's what the Lord is saying in this season through you by you and to you. Are you hearing somebody? Wanted to start that business, you did not know how. You shall receive answers in dreams. So. You shall receive answers through men. So. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you are growing in wisdom this season. So. Lift up your hand and let me quickly pray for our giving and our offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Pray for everybody under the influence of my voice. That there shall be nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken in their lives. I declare and I decree that they are moving from the land of just enough to a land of more than enough. I pray that as we give, good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. Man shall come and give unto us. You shall assign men, you shall command men, you shall speak to men. Doors from unexpected areas shall open. Doors in places we never thought shall open. We shall harvest even in areas we never thought we shall harvest. In the name of Jesus, we declare and we decree that as we give, let this offering, let this giving have witnesses just as Abel's giving, offering had witnesses. And may we do it in faith, in Jesus' precious name. Somebody say, that is so. That is so. I have prayed for you. It's our Wednesday service, brothers and sisters, those who are coming for the first time. This is our giving time. So every Sunday on our service we give and every Wednesday we give. But most of our, prof our services on Wednesday are prophetic services. That's why we urge that on your giving, attach a need to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if it is something that you are specifically trusting God for, you can attach a need to it. And we believe that giving is so powerful that even someone's angels, according to Acts chapter 10, according to Revelation 8, 
Praise the Lord, everybody. So may God meet us at the point of our needs. And one thing you should never do when you give is to give because you're, you feel compelled. Like, you feel forced. Never do that. The Bible says never give because you're compelled. For God loves what? A cheerful give. So you must always be excited when doing it. And some of you, you need to understand that that's your gift. The Bible speaks about gift of giving. A lot of Christians are not taught on that gift. Hallelujah. And once it becomes your gift, the enemy will fight everything financial about you. And the more he fights, the more you must exercise that gift. Are we together? Just like any other gift has its adversaries, your gift also has its, uh, uh, its adversaries. Some of you are kingdom financers. The enemy knows that once God blesses you, a lot of people are going to be blessed. Right? So understand that your giving empowers the work of God. And never be deceived and told otherwise. It empowers the work. We are able to do what we do today because somebody was obedient and somebody committed themselves and said, I'm going to be a partner with this ministry. I'm going to make sure that this ministry, uh, God will take this ministry from one level to another level. And some of you, you are part of us, you are unable to come and serve physically, but you serve the Lord with your substance. Luke 8 verse 3, it says, and the women ministered unto Jesus with their own money. Hallelujah. Another vision says with their own substance. Another one says from their hard work. So we must never love God and never love to give towards the work of God. And that is because nothing finishes in the hands of a giver. If you can think, you can thank. And thanksgiving, or rather appreciation towards God, is qualification for multiplication. Hallelujah. 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 So, um, I will answer that a little bit later. Um, we have our giving platforms right on the screen, right? Uh, Sunni, I will answer you uh, later. I will answer you. And God bless everybody that is giving. It's giving time. I believe we have our giving platforms right on the screen. And our cash app is New Life Global Church, right? New Life Global Church. And we have PayPal there. That should be the website. Am I correct? There we go. And other platforms. Giving time. Blessing time. Giving time. Do it with a joyful heart. Do it with a joyful heart. And some of you, the enemy things, uh, there is nothing that will happen, you know, in your life. But he's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. Something good will happen. Something great will happen. The last shall be the first. Amen? So it's giving time. Usually, when people give, I talk and I'll be still teaching and I realize that it disturbs a lot of people because they don't want to miss what I'm going to say. <laughs> so when you see people leave, they are not leaving, they are going to give and they are coming back. Say, I'm awakened. I'm awakened. Say, 2024, 2024 is, my year is my year of greatness. Of greatness. Say, nothing, nothing shall stop me. From fulfilling, From fulfilling purpose, purpose and, destiny. and destiny. Say, I'm a man, I'm a woman. Uh-uh, you can't say I'm a man and a woman. You are one. Whatever you are, you will say it. Say, I'm a man and I'm a woman. A woman. Who, is Who is to fulfill destiny? To fulfill destiny. 
I'm a man, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Who, is Who is on an assignment? Say, I'm God's secret weapon. I'm God's secret weapon. And, this year, and this year, God is about to reveal me. A man of God, uh, I don't know who, and another man of God, I don't know who. So what happened is that one of my mentees came and asked this question and said, Apostle, I have a question. I said, go ahead. I said, there is a man of God I follow as my spiritual father, and there is a man of God I follow online. Both said different things about this here. One said there's going to be too much trouble. Uh, and one says there's going to be transfer of wealth. Man of God, how can one God speak different things to two men of God about a year? How do I know which one is which? I laughed. And I gave, gave the person an answer. I said, whose revelation have you subscribed to? Whoever's revelation you have subscribed to, Whatever they've said about that year is what you're going to experience. I'm telling you now. And that is because, yes, in a year, something can happen. But God can show the man of God the good that will happen to the people he's leading. So the revelation is given. That's why Paul said, I might not be an apostle unto others, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. But unto you, doubtlessly, I'm an apostle. Because ye are the works of my hands. Do you see that now? Do you see that now? Do you see that now? Sister Veronica is here. And uh, Sister Veronica, she's one of the uh, deacons in the church. Uh, I, I, I see her there. She's actually one of our great leaders in the ministry. Very powerful woman of God, right? She's been with us for years. We bless God for her life. We love her daily. Now, she will tell you that in the year 2019, going to 2020, I told the church about what's going to happen in 2020. And she will tell you that we subscribe to the revelation of our man of God. Because we have seen God speak through him and it all came to pass. She will tell you she's here, of course, even the team and other people who are here who are part of our ministry. That on the 31st of December, 2019, going to 2020, I told the church that this year, where we are going, I saw a demon, an ancient spirit that was logged for years, being released. And I was trying to get the name of this demon that will be released to the whole world, a colleague. Do you guys remember? Amen. And I said to the people, people are going to die a lot because of this demon. I saw people losing their jobs. I saw people losing money. There is even a live video I did. It's called The Scariest Vision I Saw About 2020. It's still there on my Facebook, so you can find it. And it's live, so it can't be edited. Just in case you are thinking when you watch it, this was edited. No, it was live. You will see that it was, it's written, it was live. Where I was talking about what will happen in 2020. And a lot of people came and said, no, he's scaring people. He's a prophet of doom. No, I'm talking to the people that God has what? Put under me. Are you hearing me? So because they have been with me for so long, they know what he's saying now. It will come to pass. But what do we do? What is our role? So that what affects others does not affect us. And then we then says we are going to break barriers. We are going to break all of them. Are you hearing me? Now, every year, God will give us a word that, is a, that becomes our reality and insight to what he's going to do through us, by us, to us, and for us. So we know for a fact, every year matters. This year, he told us, is our year of greatness. So whether you find yourself in Tubaptu, yet you are going to Djibouti, and your money took you to Tubaktu. And from there, they are told you have to stay in Tubaktu. 
panic not. <laughs> ah, I'm talking to three people here. Panic not. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. When the world says there's a casting down, thou shalt say there's a lifting up. Amen. And this year, I'm telling you now, and I'm saying it as an apostle, there's a lifting up. So. Believers will have a voice like never before. And trust me, what the enemy is doing, he does not know that he's stirring up a revival. Amen. The only thing I'm advising believers to do is to read a lot. Read a lot so that you can defend your faith. That's what I will advise you. Read a lot. Read a lot. Of course, the Bible. You know, historic facts about the Bible. Just read. Are we together? I don't know if the people are here. And be where God is, not where God was. Never be where God used to speak. So let's quickly answer. God bless everybody. <clears throat> God bless everybody. Let's quickly answer uh, Sunni. Uh, Sunni was asking about dreams or something. If the dream, can the enemy hijack a dream? Let me tell you something. The enemy can hijack anything that comes to the realm of men. The moment he knows about it, the moment you are aware of it, he becomes aware of it. He's the God of this world. So once it passes the realm of everlasting, which is the realm of angels, then gets to the celestial realm. The moment it gets to the realm of men, which is the realm of time, he can hijack it. But I don't see him hijacking it in your life as long as you are a believer in Christ and you are praying and you are not compromising when it comes to that. I don't, I don't even see how Christ, Christians should not even worry about it. The devil is so scared of you that some of you you see the prayers that you pray to bind him. The day you realize how powerful you are compared to all these small demons that are fighting you, you will laugh because your hair can scare them. You didn't hear what I just said. The Bible says demons, they believe. They even tremble. Look at that. You, you believe you're not trembling. <laughs> you see, they appear to be strong. They are not. That's what the Bible says. Those who believe in me, they shall cast out. Cast out. You know what to cast out. I can't cast out this table. It's too heavy. But I can cast out this. I can cast it out. That's how powerful you are. You have what we call, that, 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 that's what we call believer's authority. So yes, but don't, you see, don't be even troubled by that. Because in your world, it should be impossible. Where the devil is pulling you when you're sleeping, stretching, you know, gone are those days. It was before you came and sat and listened to the teachings of Apostle Mies by the Holy Spirit. God has capacitated you. You can't be sleeping and you are stretched by demons and spirits and witches and neighbors who are bewitching you. They know that they were stretching you at night. Ah, no. That's not your portion. You are sleeping, you are being pulled by air, by your air. People are busy. Ah, no. Nah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. As a matter of fact, the weapon that shall prosper against you is not formed yet and shall never be formed. Somebody wants to know what about reading books such as New Revelation, Great Gospel of John, can you confirm if this is true, if God uh, so informs you? I'm not sure really where the question goes, but if this is referring to apocrypha, you know, removed books, lost books of the Bible or other books or anything like that, there's nothing wrong with reading any book, but never approach the apocrypha like you're approaching the Bible. Read it like you're reading any book. The Bible, of course, has its spirit. We believe it's inspired. That's what we believe. 
I don't see anything wrong with you reading that. Just like you can read books that are even written by heathens, people who don't even believe in the existence of God, but you still go and read their books. Right? So what more about a book that tells about tells about things that happens or happen, you know, the general's lives or things like that. So read that. But I will not encourage you to be more fascinated about what's out there in the apocrypha before you read and finish what's in here. And I'm not saying it's always the case to finish to read because you say, you say to me, but Apostle, I have books that I've not, I've read, but I've not finished the Bible. You see? But I would encourage you to read the Bible. Know the Bible first. Because some of you, you will end up knowing apocrypha than you know the Bible. This one is inspired. King James, 1611 approved. Are you hearing me? Say, but do you know who King James was? God can use anybody. <laughs> I saw it in the days of Daniel in Babylon. God can use a, a non-believer to do something that will push his agenda. So it is to think small, to think God can use anybody. Hallelujah. And God bless, of course, everybody. I'm excited to announce that um, this coming Sunday, we are having our prayer line Sunday and our first ever Holy Communion Sunday service. Those who missed the service this Sunday because of technical issues, this month of February, all our partners, friends, members, followers, visitors, this month of February, the second month of 2024, February, is our month of heaven on earth. Oh, yeah. Heaven on earth, as he is, so am I. Hallelujah. Heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. I told you salvation will take you to heaven, but what you know, revelation, will bring heaven to you. So this is our month of heaven on earth. So you better be excited about it. And also, I've got good news. After all, I'm Mr. Wonderful, and I'm the son of the good news man. The good news is um, on the... T on the 30th of March, we are having our International Visitors Program. Yay. Registrations will be open from next week, Monday. I'm excited about that. Our prophetic retreat 2024 is full. There is no space. All spaces are taken. Just in case you are about to Register for the prophetic retreat 2024 that is taking place on the 27th of March to the 30th of March. Just in case you're about to register, just know that there is no space. So even if you do, the team will actually send you your money back. If you do between today or anything like that or later on, which our team will actually state that is full, I think, um, any time from now. Are you with me? So it's very important for me to announce that. So there's no space anymore for the prophetic retreat. And most of you and many people have been asking about mentorship. Mentorship currently is full as well. When will the next space and when will be the next mentorship in the year 2024? The only time you'll be able to register is between June and August. But for now, there is no space at all. However, also in the month of May, there is also the School of Seers that is coming. So registrations will open towards April or something or April. So just anticipate for that one and just make sure that for now you don't miss any service and any teachings and any videos that our team will bring. Because uh, a lot of you are saying we want the school, we want to be part of this, we want to be part of this. But, but most of these things are full. But we are informing you on time so that when the time comes, you are prepared. Amen. Are we together? Amen. 
are we together? Amen. I'm excited because I'm going to see all of you and it's going to be power for power this coming Sunday. Oh, yes. I love you with the love of God and I pray for you and thank you for partnering with our ministry, New Life Global Church. We are because you are and you are because we are. There's a ministry where everybody is somebody. Somebody's asking, how do I partner? Pastor, uh, Brother KB, please put a number on the screen, and then they can send a message on that number, and then they will reply to you. And that's how you partner. And uh, let me announce, when is our next uh, praise -athon? Well, our praise -athon is going to be in the month of uh, April going to May. Okay. Remember, we only have praise -athon two times a year. And this time around, our last one, November, USA, if I'm correct, won. Yes, it was USA. Yeah, it was USA that won the last one. The other one was Australia that won. The first one last year was Australia. November last year, USA fought and fought a good fight and took the cup for the praise -athon. So our first praise -athon is going to happen April going to May. And our last one will go uh, November going to December. So you must always be ready. August is only meek dash. Amen. Yes. So now you know, right? So you have the program. And our High Life Conference is coming this March. So stay tuned for the dates. And God bless. God bless everybody. Stay blessed.